How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ back with another No Dumb Questions in Ham Radio. I got a good email and a long one. This is from Dean and Dean has questions on digital voice ham radios as well as wants to talk about an antenna. Let's get started. So a lot of the questions I've been getting uh, on my email box at josh at hamtactical.com, again, you can send me one if you have a question on ham radio and I'll do my best to answer it, have reminded me that, you know, sometimes we need to reiterate things that I've said two years ago, three years ago. A lot of the questions I'm, I'm seeing were covered in live streams or standalone videos back in the day. And you know what, that's okay. This format is actually pretty conducive to just be really tightly focused stuff. So I hope this helps. First part of the question, terribly confused by digital radios and their respective networks. And when we say digital here, we're talking about digital voice radios. So that's going to be things like DMR, Yesu System Fusion, and D-Star. Digital voice is the topic of this email. Will a digital radio work with, an, with analog repeaters or are they confined to work with digital repeaters only. The answer is yes, almost all of them will work with analog repeaters, but you have to program them to do so. I'm thinking of DMR most specifically, it's the one that requires the most hurdles to jump through to do this in most cases. And I want to be very, very clear when I'm answering this question. There are many, many digital voice radios. There are uh, quite a number of Yesu System Fusion, and there are a few D-Star, but there are a lot of DMR. And those DMR radios are made by many different companies. So just because what I say is true for most DMR radios, it's probably not true for all DMR radios because, again, many companies make them, and there are some that are quite old now and don't do all the things that current DMR radios do. With that said, yes, every one of these radios will work on analog FM repeaters as well as the repeater of digital prominence that they are supposed to be working on. I will take a moment to talk about DMR specifically. With DMR, in most cases, you're best off just running the programming software, pr plugging your radio into it, and loading up your analog repeaters and your digital repeaters. The other radios you generally can program in the front panel pretty easily. DMR makes it a little bit harder to do that, and in some cases there are radios that you cannot do that at all. So you're generally depending on the radio manufacturer's software to program program the radio. Question part two. If I have a certain type of digital radio, D-Star for example, will it work on any other network such as DMR, Wires X, etc? Or is the D-Star radio confined to working on D-Star networks only? So yes, every one of the radios, DMR, Yesu System Fusion, and D-Star work on their respective networks only, meaning D-Star repeaters to D-Star radios, Yesu System Fusion radios to Yesu System Fusion repeaters. There is, however, devices that we call hotspots, and a hotspot kind of pretends to be a local repeater at your home or in your car that leverages the internet to push data to where you want it to be, whatever talk group or online network that you want to communicate with your digital voice radio. Hotspots generally all can convert between DMR and Yesu System Fusion, and a smaller number will convert from D-Star to DMR or Yesu System Fusion. If you want a top-of-the-line hotspot that kind of does all the things, go check out the Open Spot. There's just a, there was a new model that was just announced, the Open Spot 4, and I'm sure we're going to start seeing videos of that sometime soon. That will convert between digital types. Again, DMR to Yesu System Fusion, Yesu System Fusion to D-Star. And the third question, as this question comes up quite often, what is the best network for a new ham if they want to try digital radio? Generally, the blind answer is uh, probably DMR has the most saturation in your local community, meaning there's probably the most DMR repeaters. However, I'm not a fan of DMR. I'll just say it. I'm not a fan. I've reviewed a couple of DMR radios and I can program them and they do okay. I just don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy programming them. 
I don't really enjoy using the radios either. I would much rather use Yaesu System Fusion or D-Star. I find both are easier to use. Now, the problem with your question, it's, it's really twofold. It's what do you like doing and which radios do you like operating on and how many of those repeaters are in your area? If you go to something like repeaterbook.com and you pull up their section for Yaesu System Fusion, or D-Star or DMR repeaters, you'll see pretty quickly that there is either a decent amount of repeaters in your area or no repeaters in your area. You will find sometimes that your area could be a complete black hole for a particular digital mode. I'll post a link in the description so you can go take a look at which repeaters might be available in your specific area. So I hope that helps. And uh, Dean's last question here is totally HF related. Dean asks, I'm trying to decide between a linked dipole antenna that gives access to the 20 and 40 meter bands versus an N-fed half-wave antenna. I understand the N-fed half-wave can provide access to more bands than just the 20 and 40 meter bands without having to link and unlink wires, as is the case with the dipole. Boy, a uh, great question, and it's one that kind of deserves... Um, a bit of discussion. So dipoles are resonant antennas that are generally cut for a specific link. When we length, when we say a linked antenna, we mean it's a full length 40 meter dipole that has a little snip somewhere along the midpoint of each leg and some kind of connectors that can be connected and disconnected. When you disconnect them, that will give you 20 meters. And when you have them connected, it'll give you 40 meters. The advantage of something like that is that you can have one basic wire that runs the entire length of the antenna and just clip or unclip depending on what you're doing. Portable operators liked linked dipoles. I myself run a Soda Beams band hopper three band linked dipole which does 20, 30, and 40 meters. I generally find that during the day, 20 meters is where it's at, and that's what I have unlinked to 20. And then when night starts to come around and 20 starts to go away, I'll clip 40 into the, into the line, and then I work 40 meters. Pretty simple, and you know you can't really be that picky when you're out uh, in doing portable HF out in the field. With that said, an N-fed half wave is generally going to be harmonics of... Uh, 40 meters if you cut it for 40 meters so i think it's something like 40 20 15 and 10 and what will happen generally is one or two of the bands will be a really good match to your transceiver likely 40 probably 15 20 might be a little bit off and 10 might be a little bit off doesn't matter though, this is kind of in the weeds some. Uh, they work fine too. There is a bit of loss associated to the, uh, the characteristic impedance of feeding the antenna at the end. I will post a link in the description so you can read more about NFED or long wire antennas and the various forms of them and what we consider good, bad, indifferent, or whatever. Really, for me, it's not so much a performance question of N-fed over dipole. It obviously sounds like you're running portable, so I'm going to treat it that way. I'm going to approach the whole question from a portable aspect. For me, the question becomes uh, getting it into the air. The Bandhopper 3 from Soda Beams makes it pretty easy to get up in the air and get running as it uses the legs of the dipole as tensioning arms and has a third non-resonant just cord off the very top of the feed point that also stakes out so you have like kind of a three point guide mass that stands up in the middle of a field works pretty well i've used that in some pretty decent winds and if you have it all set up correctly um, it'll hold up pretty well with an NFED half wave, you don't need three or four connection points necessarily. You can just throw it into a tree. You can do the K at MRD special where you attach the, the last tip of the wire of the antenna to the tip of a telescopic rod and just lean it up against a tree. That'll do just fine. And for most portable operators, particularly parks on the air, you're not going to be there that long. So you don't need something that is going to be that serious of a setup. You can just kind of 
field expedient to get it up in the air and get running. Now, of course, you could guy out a central mast and have the antenna, the NFED do an inverted V or just run all the way up and shoot across like a inverted L antenna. There are myriad configuration options for an NFED. They generally can get into places that I have uh, found di uh, that dipoles can't. You also have to consider the size or length of the antenna. An end fed halfway fed from the end that just kind of can go up and drape off of something is probably an easier setup than having a dipole with the center position high up where the feed line comes down and then the two legs. One is going to be easier and likely it's going to be the end fed for getting up in the air quickly, but it's not always the case. So if it were me and this is like going to be your only antenna for a while for doing portable, I would probably say um, go ahead and go with the end fed. Unless you know that you're going to be setting up in some pretty open spaces, then a link dipole works pretty well, but you're going to have to figure out how you're going to guy it out so that that pole stays pretty much vertical in the air. I hope that helps. Uh, thanks so much, Dean, for your questions. I appreciate it. And much like uh, Dean here, if you'd like to send me an email, you can send it to josh at hamtactical.com. Trying to answer everybody's questions in the nicest way possible, inclusive and open. And I don't even have to read your name on the video, so don't worry about it. So this has been No Dumb Questions in Ham Radio. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. And if you liked it and you haven't already, click subscribe. I really do appreciate you taking your time watching and giving us the thumbs up here and supporting the channel any way you can. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. See ya.